Okay, so I'm going to screen share it. Let me see if I can pull my Google Documents up and just show you how simple my uh, like tracking system is. I'm not like, I suck at organization. I've tried everything. I've tried a notebook. I've tried like my Gmail is a hot mess right now, but I try to like um, categorize when I send emails. So I have canned responses. Um, but this is the best way I've found for me to at least track Nate. So when he gets the and I, I go back to these names every, I do follow-ups every other day. So I'm able to get through my list. I can go back to previous months. It's, it's a very simple tool, very simple way to just track names. I don't track unless I remember um, to write down, you know, where we were at in the script, when they stopped responding, or how many times I followed up, or when they told me to follow up, what month they tell me to follow up with, or, you know, oh, they're pregnant, their due date is this day, and then they'd be interested. So one simple note, let me see if I can pull it up. And then I'll screen share. So I use Google Drive. <laughs> um, so you just go to Google, you create a Google account, and you can do Google Drive, so then you can have like all these different files. Let me see if it will let me screen share. I'll pull up April. Okay. Screen share. Um, there. Whoa. Okay, let me get rid of some of these windows. Everything's beeping. Good. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, I have a hot mess for a desktop. Okay, can you guys see that? Okay. There. So I just have super, like I said, it's not rocket science. I am like the worst at technology. So, you know, some people use like fancy schmancy follow-up charts. I literally have the month highlighted in yellow. So I know every time I see a yellow bar, it's a different month. And I literally have every single name I've ever talked to. So when I open my messenger and it's somebody new that's messaged me or I've messaged or somebody has reached out because of a call to action, I put their name in this list. Um, you see like, okay, so Jamie Brown is someone that she said this date because she was starting a job. Like I can pull up her name. Um, so I don't have huge notes. I don't have like a spreadsheet where it's like a cross of like date or order or last time talked to you. Um, I'm pretty simple and I usually remember, I, I don't know what it is. I just, when I have conversations, like we were talking about last week, um, I remember the person. So the second I pull up their name, I'm like, oh yeah, I remember, you know, what we were talking about. Um, so if you want to make more notes, you can, I just have like just simple, simple notes. Um, and I just go back. So I don't have the dates of anything. I just have April. Um, and then I have who I added for my May group. So all these people that I talked to in April, these are people to follow up for sure um, that I've sent a link to or that has shown interest in my next group to follow up with. That's a great, and I've said, hey, do you care if I follow up with you next month? Um, so I create um, another list there. So it kind of filters out the names from this giant list of like, okay, we actually got to talking about a challenge. They weren't ready, but they're going to save or this or whatever reason. Um, so like interested in coaching opportunity, I just made a little note. So those people I do make a little note. Um, and then I have um, highlighted coach opportunity interest. So anytime you post about the coaching opportunity, anyone added to a sneak peek, Aaron's up there. <laughs> um, but anybody that's talked about coaching, anybody that's sent me a message about coaching, anybody that's liked, commented on a post, been in a sneak peek, anything goes in this list. And then I have, even though you have your online office, I have officially ordered so that when I go back to my list to go follow up, I'm like, oh yeah, this person ordered whatever. Um, so that I don't, you know, accidentally message one of my current challengers. I just can see that. Um, so you can see, so May, people I've added. Um, I just, again, created the list. So I started this where I highlighted their name in green when they ordered. Um, so you can kind of highlight, you can color code, you can underline, you can bold, italicize, however you want to do it. Um, but you see, it's really simple. Like it's nothing crazy. And then sometimes I put like, okay, this person was from my like page. This was for my clean eating group. So that way I can at least remember, like if they become a coach, I can kind of jog my memory of how we met. 
Um, I know what's working, what's not working. A lot of these people were from my clean eating group and like page. So I know, you know, I was doing something right there. Um, so you can see interested in coaching. I put, you know, I sent this person a webinar. So you see, it's really, really simple. It's nothing, nothing you guys can't do. Um, so you probably are all like, oh my God, <laughs> like the silliest thing I've seen. But um, anyway, that's what I do. I don't know if that's helpful or not, but I didn't have a huge, like I said, a huge topic for tonight, but I figured I'd at least um, show that to you guys because I can't remember if I've shown that to anybody. I know I've told you guys that's what I do, but I just literally every month. Okay. So I don't know if that's helpful or not, but that's what I do. So don't think that I'm over here like with mega rocket science, like follow up sheets or spreadsheets or anything. It literally is really simple. Um, but I have my names and I know who I can follow up with and I can see, you know, or if I have a customer like show up in my back office, I can see and be like, Oh yeah. You know, so I can search their name in my messenger. Um, and a lot of those people I'll go message if I'm looking, you know, last minute, Success Club push. I'm pushing for 50, so I have a few days. I'm at 12. Um, but I can go back, and I have a list to go off of. Um, it's anyone and everyone I've ever talked to or messaged or emailed. Um, so it's really simple. Does anybody have any other ways that they – I just thought, like, talking about follow-ups and stuff because it is important. And Erin and I kind of talked about it um, a little bit – or no, Kayla and I talked about it a little bit earlier today. <laughs> I'm a pen and paper kind of person, and I actually have a three ring binder that I got loose paper with, and there's like names and everything in there, and what I talk to them about, and what they're interested in, what their budgets are, and how I met them. Do you go alpha, do you, <coughs> excuse me, do it's you an alphabetize alpha. or go by the month, or what? Um, I go, by, I kind of have two systems. Um, I will transfer the names to another piece of paper by month. Like if they can't afford it, like can I follow up with you in you like the same as July, September, they're on my September list. And then I have like my October list, but I also have a all alphabetizing here. So when I can just go back and see what we're talking about when I do follow up. Right. Okay, cool. Um, Amanda, I'm going to pick on you. Do you, do you have a follow up system that you found that you like? Or are you still kind of in the process of figuring it out? <coughs> oh wait, hold on, you're muted. Yeah, I'm muted. Okay, there we go. Sorry. Um, okay. I'm still kind of in the process of figuring it out, but I used the one that was just posted on the Inspire Empire because I um imported like all my Facebook contacts. Yeah. So then I go from that and then I sort by date for follow ups. Perfect. And that works for me so far. Yeah, I was I've changed it like four or five different times. I know. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, I've, I've been using this just because it's simple and I just have all my names and I'm good at just getting through follow up. But I know everybody is different. So I hate, like, this because I know I've done scary fun, like, different than I have notebook filled up with me. Um, and I just have, like, different systems that I've tried. So, and I'm sure I will try a lot more as I progress because there's always different ways. Um, I know Anita finally hired an assistant to do all of her stuff. <laughs> There's always that. <laughs> There's um, always that. So I also write like what we have similar interest in so we can touch base about that. Because usually when you type out, you say we have similar interest when you send the yeah. friend request. Find out what that similar interest is so you guys can always have that reference back to. Yeah, I like that. That's a good idea. Because also when you're following up, you don't want to just be like, hey, I need to bring it in. <laughs> like, that's the yeah. most annoying way and guarantee way that you're not going to get a response and it's going to be crickets when you're following up. Um, so let's see, what else? Um, I just wrote a few notes because like I said, I don't have a topic. Um, overcoming objections. So this is something that's been coming up a lot. Um, and it's something that we all struggle with because I know we all hit – we all have our huge goals, right? We have our huge success club goals. We have our how many coaches we want to sign a month. We have our what rank we want to be at the end of the month. So these big goals, sometimes. Bree, can you mute the audios? Okay. 
Not sure what that was. Um, okay, train of thought. Okay, we were talking about, so um, handling objections is something that we all deal with. Um, it's a matter of knowing there are more people out there. I just have to tell myself every time I get a no and every time I get through all my messages and I'm like sitting there going, I don't know if there's any potential challengers in these messages. Like everybody's kind of like, meh, I don't know. I'm pregnant. I'm sick. I don't have a job. My car died. My dog is sick. I have a vet bill. My child is this. Like all those things when I message them and I'm scripting and I'm talking to them and I get through 55 messages and I'm like, Ooh, that is not looking good. I have to take a step back. I have to remind myself why I'm coaching and I have to remind myself that there are a lot of coaches out there finding people that want to do this. Right? So it can either be a matter of me saying nobody wants, like nobody wants my service or I can have a mindset of saying, there is somebody, I just have to put in more work this month to find that somebody. Um, so when you get through your messages and you, you feel that like block of, I, I just don't think I'm going to hit it, don't let yourself go there because that self-doubt will turn into reality because you know what you do is people can respond to your negativity and they're, they're not going to want to work with you. They're not going to be inspired by your posting. They're not going to be, you know, wanting to message you because you're not, you're not believing in them. You're not believing in what you're doing. Cause when you say, I'm just not going to make it, you're like, eh. and you check out. Um, and so you always have to believe I was talking to, I think it was Kayla. I can't remember who I was talking to earlier. Oh, I was talking to Whitney one of my newer coaches. And I was like, you know, you, you're going to get all these no's, you're going to get objections. And it's how you handle them is how your business is going to move forward. Because you can be at a dead standstill and be okay with that. Or you can say, heck no, this is my business. That person is not going to affect my goals. That person does not have a say in whether I succeed this month. It's one person. It's two people. It's a hundred people saying no, but there are other people out there. There are people that need this, that want this. I know, I believe in myself and I'm just going to go talk to more people because that's what I did in the beginning. I didn't have anybody coming to me, banging down my door, begging me to buy something. It wasn't that simple. It's not easy. If it was easy, everybody would coach and everybody would be millionaires and everyone would be top 10 and it, there would be no reward system because we would all just do it and it'd be easy. So there was a time when I hit probably seven, eight months in the business and I'm like, I have put all this effort in. I have talked till I'm blue in the face. I've repeated myself, but you have to remember it's fresh to other people. As much as you feel like you're rep repeating yourself and this business is, it's the boring three daily behaviors, the inviting, the um, personal development, and your being a product of the product that makes all the difference. So to us, it's mundane. It's boring. It's not fun all the time. Inviting is not fun. Follow-ups are not fun all the time, but we have to remember that the consistency in doing that is the key to making it or not making it in this business. Because when I hit my one-year mark and I was kind of like, uh, 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 like trying to hit success club 10 and it was never easy. Let me tell you, there was no month that I'm like, whoop, just breeze through that. Like, I see, I see some of my coaches and I'm like, how the heck did you just do that? Like there was no first months for me where I'm like, easy, like easy peasy, like no. And I see some of my coaches over there just like, I think I'm at 16. And I'm like, what do you mean? <laughs> but, but it, the matter is that it is power of belief. And I struggled with that in the beginning. I really struggled with believing that I could. I made it happen because I knew I wanted it, but I really struggled with believing. So I didn't overachieve because I was scared of failing and I didn't set big goals for myself because I was scared of failing those. Um, so it really came down to when I set my goals high. Um, so like I said, this month it's 50. I didn't say, Oh, well it's the end of the month. So I'm actually going to bring my goal down to 15. No, my goal has been 50. I'm still saying 50. I look in the mirror and say 50. I message people and say 50 until the last day of the month and the first of September comes, my goal is 50. And nobody, you know, in my messenger tonight is going to impact that or affect my attitude towards that. I'm not going to say, 
you know, we'll all settle for 14 because I'm at 12. I'm going to say, I'm going to push that much harder. I'm going to go through that list I just showed you and follow up with all those people again. And I'm going to, you know, bug some people and I might lose a friend or two on Facebook, but I am going to reach a goal. And why is that? Not because I want to be annoying to people, not because I want a bigger commission paycheck, but because I have bigger goals to achieve in my business, for my family, for my team, to show that I can do this, to show that my goals are worth something, that this is worth fighting for. So it has nothing to do with a person saying no and me being like, okay, you just have to look at it as an opportunity to go reach somebody else. Because if they're not your two success club points and they're not, you know, your next business driver or your next coach, somebody else is. There's always a next somebody, right? There's always next month where we hit, you know, we are like, okay, success club, here we come, right? It goes back to zero. It's, it's never, you know, there's never not somebody, but we have to put in the effort. And I know some months, like this month, especially, I know some of you are just like, what is going on? Like, where are the people, you know, it's come easy or, you know, we, it just feels like you're talking to your, to a wall when you open your computer, but you have to remember that, like I said, this is new to people. They have to start trusting you. So when you check out other people check out. So unless you keep that force and that snowball rolling, people check out. So you've got to keep it going. And eventually those people that you're putting this time, you're putting this effort, you're helping somebody for free. You're running a clean eating group. Nobody signs up for a challenge and you're feeling like, like, why am I even doing this? That's when you have to check yourself and go, I know I am doing this. I have bigger goals than success club five because I can see in my, my three-year goal, I can see that I've quit my job. I can see that $500 a week paycheck. I can see that. And in order to achieve that, I have to not settle for no from this person. I'm just going to move on and continue because that's all we do every day, right? You invite, you add, you invite, you follow up, you invite, you add. So it's your opportunity to decide how many people you're going to talk to. It's your opportunity to get to know people. It's your opportunity and our pleasure to reach out to people because we are the ones going and offering our hand to hold. It's not their job to come to us. It's not their job to make it easy on us because trust, I mean, a lot of us on this call, were you not a little bit skeptical or take your time before you bought your challenge? You know, I know some, some of the girls, you know, in Beachbody are like, whoop, sign me up. I want to know what the shake is. But other times, most, most cases, we have all taken our time, right? We've done our research. What is Shakeology? What is this crazy? Oh, it's a diet drink or this or that or what are the workouts? I don't know what a challenge group is, right? We research it. We asked questions. We talked to our upline coach and we're kind of like, I'm not sure. And then we talked to our husbands or our boyfriends or, you know, whoever it is, we researched it, right? And then when we jumped into it, we had a lot more questions, right? So we can't, we can't get frustrated and we can't let that hurt our goals when people are doing the same thing. When people are like, I kind of want to follow you because I did that with my coach. I know that I followed my coach and she's like, Hey, listen to this webinar. I'm like, okay. And then I'm like, I'm not going to message her back. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do this. She's going to message me. She's going to talk to me. And I don't know. I don't know. So I, I really like took a step back and I followed her. Oh, she made some great posts. I'm like, wow, this chick really is serious about it. She's so happy. And then she reached out. I'm like, okay, I'll message her back. And then I listened to another webinar and then she reached out again and I'm like, meh. But this whole time I didn't stop watching her. I didn't stop. Like if she stopped posting, I'd be like, I'm pretty sure that girl was like doing this thing. And then I don't know what happened, but like the last month I was kind of following her and inspired, but now she's like gone. So then if she reached out to me and was like, Hey, sorry, I've been gone. Like I was doing something else and tried this business, but like, no, this is really where we want to be. You'd be like, I don't know. But when you're consistent, I was like, all right, you know what? This chick has something. She's She's serious about this. She's legit. I've checked it out. I looked into Shakeology. You know, I've looked into the programs. This is what I want to do and where I want to be. So we've all been there, right? We've all, we've all been the critic. We've all been the skeptic. So we have to understand that the people we're talking to, and even if you're using a script or you're asking or you're breaking it down and you have the perfect fit for somebody that you know is going to work, it might just not be their time. They might not be ready to make that commitment. And we don't want them to make that commitment until they are ready. Because if somebody buys a challenge pack and isn't ready for that change, 
you know what happens is that challenge pack either gets returned and we're just stuck sitting at negative for the next month, or they're sitting there with something that that's not going to help them. And we can't do anything about that. And that makes us feel bad. Cause I know when I sell a challenge pack to somebody, I'm ready. I'm on it to help them. Right. And then they're not messaging me back. They're not showing up in the challenge group. I feel bad because I've told this person that I want to help them. They can reach their goals. I've built confidence. I've instilled in, you know, enough confidence in them to buy this. And then it's sitting on a shelf. So just know those people will come around. Those people are your critics and, and let them allow them to make you stronger, allow them to let you grow in how you post and post to them, share to them why they need this, why it's different. Handle, I think Bonnie Ingle said this on the call um, for Inspire Empire. Like every opportunity, every post you make is an opportunity to handle the objections. So when somebody says to me, I just don't think that I could ever be a stay-at-home mom, like there's no way I'd make enough money to quit my job. You know what I do is I go and I post about the freedoms that I've had from quitting my job thanks to Beachbody. I don't have to go prove anything to anybody. I don't have to go message or be weird or sell them on it. I share it. I tell them this is what happened. You know, I, I can see proof in my life. And they can see that and, and take it for what it is and decide if that's something they want to do or not. And I can only guide them and share, you know, what's happened in my life. I know that my confidence is way better. I know that I'm not on medication anymore. I know that I don't have anxiety as bad anymore. I know that, you know, I'm a better mom because I'm fit and I'm healthy and I have more energy to play with my kid. Um, I know that I've become a leader through personal development and leading my team because you guys rock. I mean, I never would have wanted to get on calls like this. I didn't even like getting on training calls with my coach because I was like muted like you guys are right now. And I'm like, is somebody, do I have a booger in my nose? Like I was super self-conscious. I didn't want anybody to see me without makeup. Like it was ridiculous. Like nobody was looking at me. Like who was I kidding? It was Anita Meyer. And like everybody was like, ah. But like I was concerned about what people thought of me so badly that I would like have anxiety. I would sweat like. I'm on a computer and I'm over here like sweating, like, ew, gross, like I have like this horrible, you know, so just let them, let them be your worst critic. Let somebody dissect it and share with them that they can dissect all they want and you have nothing but love and pure confidence in what you do and what you have to offer. And that will show through the biggest out of anything you can script them or tell them or sell them. The second you share the opportunity on your Facebook, and you can discredit all the negative responses that anybody wants to have because you don't have, you don't, you don't, you're not reacting to it, right? You're discrediting. You're saying, I, you can ask any questions you want, and this is what it means to me. This is what Beachbody means to me. This is the culture. This is my team. I'm opening up my heart. I'm opening up my family. I'm sharing my journey. I'm sharing my struggles. It is not easy. We all share that we don't want to work out some days, right? And that's real. And people are like, oh, she's not perfect. Thank God. Like, I don't have to be perfect to do this. I don't have to weigh 90 pounds to do this. I don't have to be a fitness bikini model to do this. You know, I can be on my journey at 200 plus pounds and rock it because I can gain confidence. And I have a team backing me up saying, you know, that's a struggle to share. That's something to offer somebody because somebody might not be ready to work with me, but they might be ready to work with somebody that's in their shoes. So sharing and sharing and sharing. That's all we can do. Every one-on-one -on -one I have is about building confidence in yourself. Because if you don't believe in this, if you don't, if you look at your computer and you go, well, I hope it works. Saying you hope or someday is believing that it will never happen. You're looking at other people and you might look at other coaches, top coaches, whoever it might be that you follow and you might say, I'm so, like, I so wish I was there. I so whatever. And I told you guys last call that I stopped following people every day. I don't look at top coaches every day. Yes, it's great to get ideas. And yes, it's great to get trainings. But you are not a top coach because you are creating your identity to be your own top coach, right? You're not going to be Lindsay Matway ever. You're not going to be Anita Meyer and ever because you are going to be genuine to you. And the people that are following you are inspired by that alone. So any objections you get, you can turn it off 
and say, I'm going to make that my inspiration for my next post. I'm going to make that my inspiration when I go invite more people to know that, you know, one no or 20 no's is not impacting my business in any way because they will impact my business someday, right? In two months, in three months, maybe next year, those people are going to see that I'm not going anywhere and they're eventually going to get sick of trying or giving up or um, doing wraps or taking a, a crazy fat fighter pill that promises to bur you can eat cheeseburgers and you're going to burn the weight off. Like, you know, they're going to see that you're getting real results and that you're not saying it's a fast, quick, easy fix. You're saying it's a journey and you want to help them be on that journey. It's a lifetime opportunity. So if you can believe that, if you can instill that in yourself and you can get that across in your posts and in your messaging, when you are talking to people, they will, they will trust you. Um, all right. So I'm glad we kind of got on topic. Um, <laughs> I, I like really didn't know where I was going with the call tonight because, um, like I said, I want everybody to focus. You know, I know that it, it gets drowned in our heads, the success club, right? And it drives you crazy. But you really, every call I have, I just want to tell you guys like how important it is because it's the measure of your success in your business, in yourself, the belief in yourself. It's the goals you set for yourself. It's not about hitting points. It doesn't matter. Like that is not, you know, the, the meat of it. It's, it's believing in yourself to hit a goal and make this happen. When I was hitting success club and my coach said to me, you know, I hit Emerald and I was kind of like, Diamond just, I put it like in this crazy category, like diamond, like it's so unachievable. Like all these people on our team are diamond. And I was like, oh, I'm just this little baby emerald. Like how the heck are you going to get eight coaches? And then you're going to get those people to get coaches. Like that just seems insane to me. Like how am I ever going to achieve that? Like I put it up there on a pedestal. Like I wasn't good enough to be that. Like I wasn't good enough to be there and do that. And then I tell you guys, the second I was like, oh, it's not really that big of a deal, right? I get like some of my challengers to sign up as coaches and I ask them to refer to people and we sign them up under them and then boom, never mind, not scary. I don't know why I was thinking crazy like that. I had no self, you know, I had all this self doubt built up and like built it up in my mind to be something that it wasn't. It wasn't scary. So any goal you have, any success club goal, any, sorry guys. My phone keeps going, Yay! <laughs> I usually have my messenger turned off, but I don't know why it must have turned back on. Um, don't, let, don't let that little voice inside your head make any pedestals or make anything above you because we're all in different situations. We all have different lives. We can't measure our success based off each coach. I used to do that all the time. Oh, that person got so many success club points and they signed like 12 coaches. Like they're a diamond, diamond, diamond. What's, why, why am I not doing that? Well, it was because I wasn't putting in as many hours as that coach. Probably I wasn't inviting as many people. Probably, you know, it wasn't a matter of that coach being more amazing of a coach. It was a matter of my own disbelief in where I wanted to be or my push in my goals. Cause it's just time. It's not, it's not anything scary. We all do the same thing as a top coach. You might have, you know, Anita might have somebody messaging you know to get challengers but they do the same thing that's inviting right so we all invite we all share our journey and we all follow up and we all add to our network that's all we do so don't make it scary don't make it feel like you have to have a youtube channel or blog to be successful in this i don't have a blog guys i went and tried to create a blog six months into the business do you want to know how many blog posts i got on that blog i set the blog up that's what i did and that was it. <laughs> so don't feel overwhelmed by Amy Silverman having a rock star Instagram page or a photographer boyfriend. Like, don't be overwhelmed by that because that's not you. Nobody wants to see me naked on a beach somewhere in a thong bikini. Like, nobody wants to see that anyway. So, um, hold on. I've noticed that best coaches come from running awesome challenge groups. Yep, exactly. Um, we all, we all I unmuted you. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to elaborate. I just have noticed when I have, like, there's been challenge groups, I don't show up every day even when I co-run it with people, but when I'm private messaging those people, like, once a week, and also, like, 
writing my nutrition down every day and doing the challenges, many challenges with them, they're like, she is there with me and I want to do that. One, because they're going to watch her lifestyle and like, okay, this girl is really positive. What's she doing? And then like a lot, like I was like, want to be Brie. I was like, I want to be a stay at home mom and work from home. What do I need to do to get there? I felt every step that she did. So if you are present in your challenge groups and in your challengers, they're going to want to become coaches and they're going to want to work this business. And I have like three one-on-one calls tomorrow from the challenge groups I've ran the last two weeks because they all want to convert to coaches. And you can tell because we've all had that challenge group that's fallen flat on its face, right? You get, you get say five challengers, right? And most groups, let's say 75% of your challengers show up, right? So, okay, I'm going to get three people to like, really gung-ho right and if I'm not present it goes like I've done that I've had a group where like people stop participating and then I kind of stop and then I forget we've I've been there like I'm not gonna lie and say I've run rock star challenge groups every single month every single day for the last year and a half I haven't because I'm human and I'm figuring it out and I still you know I play around with my scheduling times and you know, sometimes you get a group of challengers that have different schedules and then it just falls flat and you're like, oh, and then you have those groups that you're like, boom, like we got this, like you're ready to rock. And that's the momentum you need to bring every single day. You can't expect your challengers to bring the momentum every day. If they are bringing it that first day, that first week, you got to bring it like it is the end of your business. Like bring it like those people are going to be the end of your business. If you don't help them succeed in goals, then you are not doing your job. That's what I say. And if somebody falls flat, I'm not telling you to beat yourself up over a challenger that falls off the wagon and stops messaging you and stops being participant, a participant in the group. I'm not saying that because I have challengers all the time. I can sign up 15 people a month and I have maybe, you know, five to eight people just really go after it. I can't do anything about the people that aren't messaging me back. I can't. I can't be like, you said you really wanted this, right? Like, I can't do anything about that. And I don't get mad about it because a lot of those people come back around. A lot of those people will ask me, and I'm not like, well, you need to really buy another challenge pack. I'm like, you know what? I know it was bad timing. You got started off great. Your first week was good. You got busy with your new job or your kiddo or whatever. You know, and then you say, yeah, I've got this group coming up. Let's rock you in it, right? And and they're ready, so they've come to you, and they might add that spark and flair that you need in a challenge group. Maybe you have three challengers. You're like, oh, it'd be great. These two people, you know, my previous girls, they didn't really, you know, participate in a challenge, but why not, right? Let's add them. And then they might be rocking it out, and they're going to inspire your new challengers, right? So never give up on somebody, but also know that sometimes it's just not the right timing. I know that. I've bought in diet pills. I've bought in Advocare and all this crazy stuff. And like, they tried to get me to be a rep and it just, you know, it wasn't right. And they would message me and I'm like, I'm not going to be in your weird group. Like, that's weird. So I'm sure, you know, the person about Advocare was like, hmm? and she never messaged me back. She never, you know, I was like, okay, <laughs> like, but don't, don't feel like, you know, you're a failure. Like sometimes they're just not ready. So by you showing up on your Facebook, it goes back to that objection, you know, if they're not ready, they know that you're still there. You know, your heart's still beating for them. You're, you're still in it. So they're not afraid to reach out because you're always offering it. You're always saying, join me next time. Right? So that's, what's important in all of this is that you are only in charge of, of doing what you promise to people. So when you promise a 30 day accountability group, give them that, right? Be accountable to yourself to host that group and be accountable for 30 days, regardless of who shows up, because I'm guilty of, of blogging out and being like these girls, right? You know, but don't do that because that's quitting on yourself. That's quitting on what you told them you would do. So a lot of these people, they do follow it, right? So the people that don't message us back and then you get that message out of the blue going, Hey, I know you like messaged me like, and I'll be like looking I'm like, Oh, I messaged this girl like in 2014, you know, (laughs) like I know, I know I did message you like a long time ago. She's like, I've been following you. I just want you to know it's been really inspiring to watch your journey. They follow you. They watch you. If it's a person that's bought a challenge pack or not, if it's a person you messaged about a free 
you know, garage sale or a couch on their current, like it doesn't matter. Those people are watching and it's crazy. The messages you get some days, I don't get them every day, but like out of the blue, like that's the best message when it's like this long. And I'm like, well, like scrolling the message. And it's like somebody telling me how much I've changed their life. And I'm like, who knew, right? A post about me and my kiddo going to the beach. And somebody was like, I really like the outfit you wore. Where did you get it? And it was on my like page. And today she's like, oh my gosh, I'm freaking out that you responded to me. I didn't think you would, you know, like like pages. I didn't know what they were either. I thought it was like fan, like, oh, like celebrities had like pages, right? And this girl was like blown away that I responded where my romper was from. <laughs> and I'm like, well, add me on Facebook. Like whatever. She's like, oh my God. So then she like added me and we were talking. But it's like, you never know who's following you or who like, like I was starstruck. You know, you look at top coaches and then I go to Summit and I'm like, oh, it's just Lindsay Matway. <laughs> You know, like I was starstruck too. I was kind of like, oh my gosh, like that's like, like beach body royalty, you know? So it's, it's kind of crazy to get those messages, but being positive and just staying focused on knowing that you're following in your niche market of whoever you're trying to connect with. Mine is moms and young women who want more for themselves than a retail clothing job. Like that was my thing. I'm like, I've been doing retail clothing, store managing, forever and then I was bartending and then I quit and I had my kiddo and then I went back to retail managing and I was like I just don't want to do this anymore. like it's not a fun job I love talking to people but it's just not fun like you sit on a computer and you make a schedule and then you have teenagers telling you that they have boyfriend issues and can't come to work like nobody has fun with that <laughs> you know so I I really try to share how much I love this because I do because this is not a job to me. I have days where I'm like, oh, I just don't want to open my messenger. But for the most part, what do we do? We get to share and inspire and motivate people that need that. Need that. And I was there once. And so the fact that we get to do that for hundreds and thousands of people is incredible. So I don't know. I hope this was a good motivational tool tonight. I did, like I said, I don't really, I didn't really have a topic, but I hope it like open your eyes to, you know, really think about why you coach. Why did you sign up as a coach? Why do you continue to coach? What is it about you that people are going to want more of? Because you have that spark and that energy that people just latch onto. So if you can share that, don't get down about the nose. Don't get down about the, the haters. Just know you're doing something right when people get affected by it, right? So that's all I have. We're going to get timed out, but I don't want to keep everyone any longer. So I hope it helps. I hope you guys are going away with a fresh start and a spark in your head for posting this weekend. Um, I know that I'm ready to like go message people now. Like sometimes you just need to pump yourself up. Like just go have a pep talk with yourself sometimes and just be like, girl, get out of your own head. Just go, just go do it. Right. So that's all I have. I will talk to you guys in the group chat and on our page. Who's ready to rock success club? Woohoo! All right, I'll talk to you guys soon, okay? Bye!